It is a pre-exploded device and pre-opened. It has been explored. It's very sooty inside. And here's the story. So Chris sent this and he said, it's a power supply for a Microsoft Surface that blew up quite spectacularly moments after being attached to the computer. It destroyed the Surface beyond repair and the external monitor attached to it. Excellent. We like to do a good job here. So let's uh, get this out. What voltage is it anyway? It puts out 15 volts at 2.58 amps and 5 volts at 1.5 amp. It's got the USB port for the 5 volts and it's got the cable coming out here, which we'll cut off. Don't need that. It's just going to stop it being easy to open. Right here. That is possibly, the, well, the, a lot of the current went down that cable because that's what blew up the the uh, tablet and the monitor. So now let's get this out of here. It's also worth mentioning, uh, it's called Replace AC Adapter, not Replacement. It's all done in Chinglish. Uh, model number DHM1800, input 100 to 240 volts. Um, warning, it is normal that has certain temperature increasing during use. It's all, it's, it's a cheap clone. Right, let's get down close to this and knock one out. What do we see? This is uh, been explored. Um, one of the problems when they blow up is because it's just a sooty mess, you can see tracks have been vaporised here, but you don't know what initiated the problem because sometimes the fault itself obliterates that problem. One of the things that comes to mind if a fault occurred on this side, if, say, for instance, it just decided to go bang, as they sometimes do, there's a possibility there was flashover from this side. And I do see at the opto-isolator where it's going from the high-voltage side to the low-voltage side, um, these pins here in that isolation slot do suggest an opto-isolator under there. That suggests that it could have actually flashed over onto those pins. Um, oh, sticky schmoo. Oh, that's got heat sink compound going onto the plastic case. Um, anything obvious here? The tracks around the transistor are intact. I would have expected them, if that had gone, I would expect them to blow first. But this has been something significant here. But having said that, uh, when a fault occurs like this and the, a track vaporises, even if it's a small one, it creates a metal plasma, a metal-loaded conductive plasma that then causes basically a, a sort of like an arc lamp. It just initiates continuous current flow through that and it engulfs and that's what makes it go bang with a really big flash. What other routes could it have gone? It could have gone via the transformer. The transformer is a common failure mode. Let's tilt this back. Can I tilt it back? Not really. Um, there's the output diode. Another possibility here. Oh, that's a plastic case diode, though. Another possibility is that, you know, these metal heat sink fins can actually come in contact with something else. It almost looks like there's a bit of splatter there, but I, I don't see any skid mark. There is a little bit of skid mark at the bottom here. But I don't think it's near any of the, the low voltage components. The transistor in here is also plastic. So, oh, and look at the way the heat sink comes down to low voltage, but is it clear? Oh, look at this. Look at this. Let's, let's zoom down in that. In fact, I'll bring it up to here and we'll focus on it. And uh, we can actually zoom in a bit further at that. Do you see what I see here? It's actually a little skid mark right next to the inductor, but that transistor's plastic. Is there anything else connected to this? Um, hold on, I'll zoom out again. And I'll go back down to here, which is the best place to be for working. Oh, there's a little metal tab just in here. Can you see that? The little metal tab just... Uh, anchoring this heat sink down. Oh, and it's connected to this track, which is possibly this track that initiated this sort of failure. What would that have been? 
That is going over to there. That is probably class Y capacitor over there. So this is probably the negative connection to the power supply. So this little inductor here, let's bend it over and see if it's actually all sooty. Let's just get this thing out completely and see if we can actually see. Uh, is this going to really help things much? Yeah. If you look very close at that, I'll bring it back up again. I'll bring it up to about here, focus on it, zoom down, and you'll see the little telltale splatter of copper there, where it's rubbed through on that aluminium heat sink, and that's where the fault current is taken uh, to the circuitry. That's annoying. What a terrible design. They must have known something like that could happen. Unless it was designed for a different inductor. How many of these are out there? Because that pretty much means if this was touching, when the surface was plugged in, or anything was plugged into this USB port, it potentially became live at mains voltage. Uh, what connection is that? That is going over to the USB. Um... And when that became live, it means voltage. Let's see, where's the tracks for this? When it became live, it means voltage. If you were holding the tablet at the time, you might have noticed a stronger tingle than normal from a charging tablet because technically speaking, if this was touching, the tablet would have been live. But uh, when it was plugged into the video monitor, then that provided the path to ground. And that's why it's blown up the video monitor as well. Because the uh, rectified current has flown through this metal heat sink, onto that inductor, and then along, it must have found its way along the low voltage signal, the 15 volts of line, to the tablet, and then found, uh, because the tablet's not grounded, it would, if, it would have just been live on its own, but because it was plugged into the monitor, the current has continued along the signal wires, which has blown up all the circuitry in the process, and then it's gone to ground via the monitor, and that's what's killed the monitor as well. How annoying. What a terrible thing. One oversight. Uh, if This is because they needed a big heat sink to try in a plastic enclosure to try and dissipate the heat from this transistor behind here. Can I get that off? I kind of want it off. I want to see a bit more. Let's see if I can unscrew that screw. I can unscrew that screw, but it's not going to help me get the... Oh, there it is. Oh, it has. Ugh. Uh, oh, it's left. It's taken quite a divot out of that. That would have been quite a flash. Not as much of a flash has happened in other bits. So I'm guessing the transformer has been absolutely fine. It is just that poor placement of the components with the low voltage side being next to the high voltage side. And again, it's only that case, that heat sink could not, you know, it could have just been put onto an isolated pad here, but they've actually connected that heat sink onto what appears to be the ground for what's left of that circuitry. Odd. I'm just, uh, I'm just pondering things here. Here's the capacitor. This capacitor, yeah, is the negative. It's the negative of that big fat capacitor there that's uh, connected to that. So that is uh, what initiated the fault. That bridge on the uh, from the input side to the output side that has then caused this to actually blow up, but also in the process, it's the past enough current to actually blow up the equipment it was connected to. What a shame. It shows that, you know, sometimes you're better actually getting... Uh, I mean, it looks a relatively good design, but they've just... It's got flaws that would have been picked up in high voltage testing, perhaps. Unless it's vibration during transit, maybe they did test it. And the vibration, that vib rubbing against the aluminium during the transit is basically just worn away through it. The fix here might be, if they wanted a quick fix, would be to just stick a little piece of insulating material down onto that inductor, uh, which is a filter component to actually block it from making contact with that aluminium. That would have been the cheapest fix. Or just take a section of that aluminium out so that the inductor is nowhere near it. Yeah, just this is what happens sometimes when you design things that you don't really consider 
odd things that could happen. You Maybe they just were thinking in their head, you know, it's grounded, so it's absolutely fine. It's connected to the main's negative. Uh, and they just didn't really consider the vicinity of those components, just perhaps because they were clear on the circuit board and they didn't really think of the aluminium aspect. But that was interesting. It was well worth taking apart. It's just one of many uh, situations where a cheap power supply has caused issues and blown something up. But it's also worth mentioning that some prominent high quality branded equipment has also been caught out by the same sort of things where the person designed the aluminium fins, maybe they increased the size just because there was a issue with overheating and they just filled all the space, but they didn't think about the component that was actually going to be in the circuit board. So it happens to good companies as well as, uh, as cheaper companies. But there we go. Interesting. Well worth exploring.